what we're going to look at tonight is Russia in, uh, in prophecy. Uh, we, we are living in very interesting times and, uh, you know, well, of course, we know our grandparents and parents. Uh, they went through two world wars and the depression and, uh, you know, many other calamities and so forth. And it has been that down through the ages. But it appears in over the last 100 years or so that things have really become intense in that way. Jesus described this particular time as a time of sorrows or the beginning of sorrows. And uh, we're seeing that, uh, the pestilences and so forth, something that, you know, uh, my generation really hasn't uh, experienced this way, although we've, we've seen the SARS virus and we've seen the AIDS virus, of course, and, uh, you know, it's still taking millions of lives as well. So it's something that the scriptures tell us about, but it's also, uh, we read it, of uh, other aspects of Bible prophecy. So uh, we're going to look at Russia tonight. Uh, many years ago, I, uh, we were having an outreach in Geelong. We had our prophecy boards up there. Many of you probably uh, remember those. And I still remember a lady coming in and looking and said, oh, no, look, I, look, I, I know it's right, but I really don't want to know about it. <laughs> and I guess ignorance is bliss in many ways, I guess. But the, the idea of Bible prophecy is that uh, we are prepared for when these things happen. And uh, we'll see how we are to be prepared you know, being filled with the Holy Spirit. But, uh, you know, God doesn't want anyone to perish, but uh, all to come into everlasting life. So there is a plan, uh, God's plan, and, uh, and part of it is shown to us uh, what nations will be doing in the last days. And uh, one of those nations is Russia. So uh, we see there uh, a map. And on this map, we see uh, Russia that is spread right across the north parts. It's a, a very big country. And we, uh, you know, we bring this up because um, the scriptures we're looking at tonight will you know, constantly remind us that these people are going to come out of the north parts. We go to the scriptures and we find here that uh, Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham and Japheth, as we read there in, in Genesis. And uh, Japheth's uh, descendants... Uh, 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 of uh, Russia, and then the, the Russian scholars agree that they are descendants of Japheth. And this was some thousand three, some three thousand years ago. Um, they came, they rose up from the south of Transcorsica, came across into that country. What we're particularly going to identify is, uh, you know, the, the the nation Russia is what is being spoken about here, and what it shall be be doing in the last days. So uh, here's an old map and uh, just showing uh, some of the names across there in, in Russia, Goma, Margog, Meshek uh, and Tubal. These uh, people will see uh, descendants of Japheth. We read in Ezekiel and uh, the Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39, they're called the Armageddon chapters and they're written about two and a half thousand years ago. Ezekiel uh, Verse 1 starts off with that the word of the Lord came to Ezekiel. So uh, what we're looking at tonight is not something that uh, Ezekiel came into, but it's what God, God's word. It's the word that God gave him. And it says here, Son of man, set your face against Gog, and the land of Margog, and the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against them. So these names, Gog, Margog, chief prince, Meshach and Tubal, We'll have a look and understand what these names mean. Gog uh, means a pharaoh or a Caesar or a czar. In other words, a dictator. Uh, Margog, he was the son of Japheth. And the word chief is very interesting because uh, back in 382, uh, Jerome, when he was translating out of the original Hebrew into Latin, uh, he couldn't find a nation called Rosh in the Genesis 10 uh, there, there's a table of the nations and he couldn't find Rosh. So the closest that he felt he could come to in its uh, translation was chief, although to his credit, he did put in his margin Rosh. So here we have a nation being named even before it came into existence, over some thousand years beforehand. The prince means a king of Rosh, Meshach, was a son of Japheth and Tubal, son of J uh, Japheth also. Uh, Meshach, Moscow, Tubal, Tobolsk. We come into a, another understanding of what Rosh or Rus 
You know, the Vikings uh, founded Kiev in the ninth century. And they were called the Rus. So their legacy lives on. Russia takes its name from these people. And uh, later they assimilated into the indigenous tribes, which would have been the Jafeti peoples. So there was, uh, you know, the, the nation of Rus. So uh, as we go on into Ezekiel, we see here, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O God, that is the dictator, the chief prince, or the king of Rosh, Meshach and Tubal, and I'll turn thee back and put hooks into your jaws and bring you forth. And all thy army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armour, even a great company, with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. So here we see a, uh, this nation of Russia uh, coming down out of the north, and uh, fully armed with all sorts of armour. We're going to look at some of those armour. It's going to be uh, told uh, hooks into your jaws. We see Russia being brought, brought into conflict, even in the Middle East at this, this stage. Uh, three times in the scripture we're told they come down from the north. Five times we're told many people with thee. You know, so the many people will see, they, they identify some of the, these nations, but... You know, I've been thinking lately, perhaps, you know, that the many people with thee is that uh, the China may uh, throw in its hand with Russia as well. We know that they're very uh, closely linked together uh, in these things. So, um, you know, we see a world arming itself and taking sides. For Ezekiel, I'll turn you back as we looked at and put hooks into your jaws. Persia, Ethiopia, Libya, Goma, Togomar, all these. Uh, well, not all of them, are descendants of Japheth. Persia, today is Iran, and we know where they uh, stand in the Middle East situation. And after many days thou shalt be visited. In the latter years thou shalt come into the land that was brought back from the sword against the mountains of Israel. So what this appears to be is, of course, once again, the latter years, and uh, coming against the mountains of Israel. Now, this doesn't only mean uh, Israel in the Middle East as we know it, but we understand that uh, Israel was 12 tribes, 13 counting Manasseh, and uh, a poor one tribe, Judah, uh, a portion of those did come back into Palestine. But the rest of the tribes didn't. They're what you know, people call the lost tribes of Israel. And uh, we know that they uh, uh, migrated down in, through into, into Europe. And so what we're looking at really is Israel uh, covering quite a, 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 a grand area of uh, the world that we're living in. And so it's going to be in the last days uh, that this battle is going to take the mountains of Israel, meaning, the, you know, the governments, the country, the, the people of Israel. We're coming to, uh, down into verse 9 and 13. So it says, They shall cut, ascend and come like a storm. They shall be like a cloud to cover the land. They shall think an evil thought. I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I'll go to them that are at rest, them that dwell safely, to take a spoil, to take a prey, to turn your hand to the desolate places that are now inhabited, which have got cattle and goods to carry away silver and gold. So the desolate place, of course, is the places now that are, you know, we're prosperous in many of places around the world. And, uh, well, it's to take a prey. We're told he's going to think an evil thought. Uh, we're told it's come like a cloud to cover the land. You know, uh, air warfare. Uh, we're also told here that land of unwalled villages, uh, them that are at rest that dwell safely. You know, we're told that the, the nuclear threat around the world has uh, brought us into a, a neutral understanding amongst the nations. And uh, we sort of, have, for the last, uh, uh, you know, ever since the nuclear bombs were set off over Japan, we've We've dwelt on a, a relative safe basis that uh, these uh, weapons will not be used again, but all the nations are uh, building their armory up in this area. The unwalled villages, well, you know, that's an interesting one because everybody's got, you know, incre increasingly uh, armies and navies and air force. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about this uh, with it, and of course, What's taking place in the world is uh, the cyber attacks. And uh, many people think that, you know, the Third World War has already begun with these. We've seen uh, particularly Russia and China use these. They can, uh, uh, you know, dismantle 
multipolar systems within nations. Ukraine has experienced this from, from Russia recently. Even here in Australia, uh, we've, been, we've seen how uh, things can be uh, put out of action just simply through uh, these amazing uh, computer systems, the internet systems that we have. So, you know, these things are interesting. You know, I'll go to them that are dressed. Well, it's, you know, we're moving into a point where people, it's got like that lady back there at, uh, you know, in the prophecy meeting, you know, where she said, look, I don't want to know about it. People are at rest in the sense of ignorance of what is taking place. Coming down because they want cattle and goods and silver and gold. And that is the reason for it. You know, we have trade wars. We have nations like Russia. They, they're not a wealthy nation, but they're building enormous uh, military power. We have China also doing the same thing. So we're living in a time where, as Jesus said, nation will be against nation and kingdom against kingdom. We see in verses 15, it says, Thou shalt come from thy place out of the north parts, thou and many people with thee. And you shall come against my people Israel, and it's a cloud to cover the land, and it shall be in the latter days. And surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land. So once again, just to remind us, north parts, this people called Rosh, coming down in the latter days. This is a term that's often used through the scriptures uh, to uh, designate the, the time before the coming of the Lord and his kingdom. We're also told here there'll be a great shaking in the land. Uh, Several uh, scriptures in the Old Testament and New Testament talk about uh, a, a mighty shaking in the land. Haggai speaks about it. Uh, Hebrews speaks about it. And also in the book of Zechariah and so forth. Uh, and even in Ezekiel, we see here that in, in chapter 39, there's going to be a great earthquake. So, uh, look, we're living in these uh, difficult times. And uh, it's the times of the return of the Lord. And so this shaking is that so that all the fishes of the sea and the fowls of heaven, the beasts of the field and all creeping things that creep upon the earth and all men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence and the mountains shall be thrown down and the steep places shall fall and every wall shall fall to the ground. Now the Bible calls this Armageddon, you know, and as I said, these, is, these Ezekiel chapters they're called the, you know, the Armageddon chapters of Ezekiel. Um, how can this take place? Well, one thought is, is of course, is it's a, a nuclear war. We see here, uh, you know, this is uh, the latest uh, Russian nuclear missile. Uh, incredibly fast, incredibly sophisticated, we're told, in its defence systems and uh, incredibly uh, powerful. You know, we're... we're just recently uh, having an anniversary of the nuclear bombs that were dropped on uh, Japan. Well, if this one was to land on London, um, if you see here on this slide, uh, all of England would be decimated and a third of France, all of Holland and all of Belgium. Uh, so this is what, you know, the fishes of the sea the great shaking in the land. Jeremiah speaks, you know, the, this earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. It'll be removed like a cottage. The, the scriptures speak about this time. And so, uh, you know, and particularly in Zechariah and so forth, chapter 14. Um, even at present, uh, NATO is holding exercises particularly designed to how they would uh, tackle an attack from Russia. The nations are preparing for war. You know, a few weeks ago we looked at where the prophecy regarding, uh, you know, that nations will be beating their uh, plowshares into swords and into spears. And it is happening. You know, billions and billions of dollars are being spent on uh, these weapons of war. And uh, no good is coming out of it. As uh, Ezekiel said, you know, they will think an evil thought. Romans tells us man is an inventor of evil things. And I would say that this is one of the most evil things that man has ever invented. You know, we are at war with one another. There is an answer. And, uh, 
you know, and it's not all bad news with what Ezekiel speaks about. You know, he spoke uh, also, uh, you know, uh, 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 other prophecies, and uh, we see here a prophecy regarding the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, but he also spoke about uh, what was going to take place in Jerusalem, and uh, which Jesus spoke about, you know, where he spoke that when you see the armies compass Jerusalem, flee to the mountains, and, uh, you know, uh, that happened in AD 70, and we saw, the, you know, you see the destruction there of Jerusalem, a prophecy being fulfilled, and uh, at that time, of course, they saw the uh, worldwide dispersion of the Jews right across uh, the globe. So, but here we see in Ezekiel 36, and this is the good news. You know, the Lord said, yeah, the Lord tells us what's going to take place. How do we save ourselves out of it? So the, here he's speaking about a New Testament covenant, what was going to take place in the New Testament, in the Gospels of Jesus Christ. And it says, a new heart also will I give you. Don't we need a new heart? And this is, what, this is what the baptism of the Holy Spirit brings, a new heart, a new mind, a new way of doing things, and a new spirit will I put within you. This is the Holy Ghost. And I'll take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I'll give you a heart of flesh. You know, uh, the love of God comes into our heart when we're filled with the Holy Spirit. And this is, the, this is our being prepared for those things that are coming upon the face of the earth. Being able to endure, as Jesus said, to the end. You know, this we've been relatively fortunate in Australia. We've escaped it so far from this pestilence that we've come off pretty lightly and we've got a wealthy nation that's uh, able to uh, keep us afloat. But, but we see, you know, man is limited in what he's going to be able to do as things get worse. We're seeing more earthquakes. We're seeing more pestilences. We're seeing, you know, the more famines. We're seeing those things that are coming upon the face of the earth. And Jesus said, men's heart will be failing them for fear for these things. So here is the wonderful promise of God. I will give you a heart of flesh. I'll give you a new spirit. I'll put a new heart within you. I'll put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them. See, this, Jesus spoke about the Holy Spirit. He spoke about the Comforter. He spoke about that I will come and dwell within you. He spoke about the peace of the Holy Spirit and the joy of the Holy Spirit. He spoke about as we're filled with the Spirit, we'll be led of the Spirit and we'll be called the sons of God. So there is a different aspect of this. Bible prophecy isn't negative. It's positive because it gives a positive answer and it's personal to each and every one of us. We don't have to rely on governments. We don't have to rely, you know, on anything else. You know, God becomes our father. And this is the promise of God, yes, and it's, it's taking place all over the world. So we see in Peter, Second Peter, and he just reminds us here, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto you do well that you take heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, the return of the Lord. So this evening we've just looked very likely on the, the chapters in Ezekiel there of 38 and 39, just enough to uh, recognise Russia, recognise what it's going to be doing in the last days. We're seeing it happening and all these other nations that the Bible speaks about as well. You know, nations against nations and so forth. So here is prophecy. We're told it's a more sure word of prophecy and we do well that you take heed. In other words, listen to it. Don't say we don't want to know about it. So, yes, let's, let's understand it. What do I do? So we, as we go down into another prophecy that was fulfilled and that was uh, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the prophet Joel, 500 years before the the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, he prophesied that the, uh, the Holy Ghost would be being poured out. And that's what Peter explained to the people on the day that the church began. There in an upper room in Jerusalem, the Holy Ghost ascended tongues of fire and a rushing mighty wind, and uh, they all began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Here is the wonderful experience. These are the people receiving the new heart and the Spirit coming within. This is the Bible evidence of speaking, you know, of being filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in other tongues, 
So we see here in verse, for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, wait, tarry in Jerusalem till you be filled with the Holy Ghost and power. Now he spoke about it as being the promise of the Father. This is the promise of God to each and every person to be filled with the Spirit. He said to Nicodemus in John 3, marvel not, you must be born again of the Spirit to enter into the kingdom of God. And he went on to explain what all this meant. We'd love to explain more of this to you. And it says here, it shall come to pass in the last days. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit will take place. He's quoting from Joel. There'll be wonders in the heavens and in the earth, sun and darkness, moon into blood, before the great and notable day of the Lord comes. Wonderful. Amazing. Here it is, prophecy being fulfilled. Once again, you know, uh, just being able there, that's how the church began, you know, by uh, the prophecy being fulfilled. Ezekiel's prophecy being fulfilled, Joel's prophecy, Isaiah's prophecy. Isaiah said, with stammering lips and other tongues, will I speak to this people? And yet for all that they will not hear me, says the Lord. We're also told their tongues are for a sign, not to those that believe, but to those that believe not. So here is the wonderful thing. We receive a language. It's a prayer language. We praise the Lord in it. It's a language we can meditate and uh, rejoice in the things of the Lord, Lord in. We build ourselves up, we're told, as we're praying in the Spirit. This is God's answer to troubled times. This is the new heart. As Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let it be troubled. He said, I'm going to leave my peace with you, not the peace the world gives. What was it? It's the Holy Spirit peace. He said, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's joy and peace and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. It's an experience, and you can receive this experience yourself if you have it already, by getting down on your knees and calling on the Lord. Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. It, say hallelujah, say praise God. Thank the Lord for sending his son Jesus to die on the cross for us. So we see here the sun into darkness and the moon into blood. Great. Speaks about also the pillars of smoke, you know, the palm trees of smoke. Uh, the, and that's what takes place when you see a nuclear weapon exploded. So here it is in the Acts. And God is still the same. The word of God is still the same. The Holy Spirit is still the same. The promises of God are still the same. And we praise God. So as Peter came to the, you know, his address that day on the day of Pentecost, you know, those that had gathered around and uh, hadn't received the Holy Spirit, they said, well, what shall we do? What shall we do? And that's the, that's the question, like that lady many years ago. The, the answer shouldn't have been, oh, look, I don't want to know about it. The, you know, the question should be, what shall, what shall I do? Peter said to them, repent. We change our thinking. We change our mind. We decide to obey the word of God. Be baptised. It's in immersion in water. Answer of a good conscience towards God. We, we are blessed as we come into the waters of baptism. And every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Many folk as they come up out of the waters of baptism, come out, out of the waters of baptism speaking in other tongues. This is God's sign. This is God's blessing. This is a wonderful prophecy of being fulfilled. This is the answer. As Peter went on to say, save yourself from this untoward generation. Thank you for being with us. We'll end with a, a chorus and just a, a thank you and a, a time of prayer. We praise God. We thank you, Lord, for your wonderful word, Lord. We thank you for the Bible prophecy that we have and understand. We thank you, Lord, that we understand that we can call upon you and you will answer us and show us great and mighty things which we know not. We ask, Lord, your blessing on all those that are seeking your face and seeking for the Holy Spirit this time, seeking for a, 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 a need to be met in their life because you're a living God. And we thank you, Lord, that you answer prayer in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.